Okay, now we're narrowing it down to the fuel pump. So what we're going to do is, whoa. <laughs> Welcome back to the community, everybody, and thank you for being part of it. This week, we are staying a little bit clean for a change, which is unusual for me. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go over VW air cold oil leaks, okay? So, we want to go over it because a lot of people, I know the joke, all air-cooled motors leak oil, my beetle marked its spot, haha. -ha. No, they don't have to. And I know that stuff is kind of funny, you know. I used to talk that way about my Harley years ago. But where I'm going with this is it don't have to leak oil. I've had many that didn't leak oil anywhere. Uh, so we're going to go over how to prevent them, why they leak, and so on and so on. So... I hope everybody enjoys your stay today here, and let's get on it. All right, so we're going to get started here and go over everything. Uh, excuse if you see this here. Uh, my wireless mic broke that clipped to my collar, so I have to have that there because somebody in the comments will say, what is that clip to your shirt? So bear with me this week. I got a new one in the mail. These things happen. So, okay. The first thing is, if you're building an engine, okay, so this is going to be a little bit off first. If you look underneath or on top or whatever, and you can see where the case halves meet, like you see here, they're going to leak if the case halves that meet are scarred up inside. Let me bring you up close. Let's start bringing you up close to stuff so you can know what I'm talking about. So here's one common problem okay with uh the two-piece engine blocks is where they're machined together and the case halves meet each other a lot of times they get scarred up from screwdrivers things of that nature because when a lot of people rebuild these or take them apart they seem to like to use screwdrivers to get them to come apart which is really a bad idea uh there's different ways of doing that uh, a lot of times you can go ahead and loosen nuts up a little bit without taking the nut off and tap on it a little bit and it'll bring it apart. But I shouldn't even be getting into that today. One thing to do if you are happening, and I know I'm getting into rebuilding here, but this is just a quick tip, of course. If in fact you have your case apart, everything's cleaned up, you're ready to put it together, you can use a couple different things, okay? One is gasket cinch. It's almost kind of like snot. Uh, I hate to say that, I'm just being honest. It's by Edelbrock. It's, it's not bad. I'm not a big fan of this, but it does work. Uh, the only reason I have it is because I ordered parts from Summit and they sent it to me with it. Uh, this is a favorite of mine. It's the Permatex uh, aviation sealer like you see here. It's actually nice. I like this stuff. I'll be bringing it up a lot in the video on other oil leaks that are critical. Uh, also, you can use Yama Bond. That's a big fan favorite. And I forget the other product. I'll put it up here. Okay. And that is really big for the case halves to be put together. And it will stop the case from leaking. So that's one out of the way that was a little more like if you're putting your case back together, make sure you use the sealants, okay? Because if you don't, you're probably going to have a leak. So let's move along. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the rear main seal. Now, before somebody leaves a message in a comment saying that's not called a rear main seal, I think more people can comprehend what I'm talking about that have worked on V8s and line sixes, four cylinders over the years, the water pumpers, we have a rear main seal on the rear of the crank flywheel. Uh, so that's what I call them. No, it may not be the rear of the car, but to me, it's the rear of the engine facing the front. <laughs> now, right now, as you see the flywheels on the engine, I have the clutch and pressure plate still bolted on, but it's okay. I got a flywheel sitting on the workbench and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I have a flywheel here and I have a rear main seal. 
I have a crankshaft, but there's no point in me pulling that out. Now, here's the deal. There is your main seal, your crankshaft seal, all right? So that actually ends up sliding inside the engine block. Now, right where it goes into the engine block sometimes can be scored up a little bit, okay? So when you put this in, if your engine block is new or it's nice and clean where the seal slides in, I made a video on that. you're going to go ahead and use some dielectric grease. Now using that, actually, you're just smearing it around the outside of it and it enables it to slide in nice and easy and make a nice seal so it doesn't bind or anything. Also, you want to put some dielectric grease around here so it slides over the crank nice and smooth and it doesn't buckle. Here, let me show you something close up. As I was saying, you have a lip here. That slides over the crankshaft, okay? And what you wanna do there is put a little bit of the dielectric grease around here so this lip don't twist when you're pushing it onto the crankshaft, okay? So I did do a video on that. And here is another thing on your flywheel. Sometimes, and I think this one has it, let me see if I can get you in view. Do you see? A little groove it's hard to hold this up in the air a little groove here I don't know if you can see it a lot of times it will wear a not a groove where your fingernail even catch it but it's pretty light you want to go ahead and take some fine emery cloth not medium not heavy but fine and polish this up real good around here the snout so when this goes on there it seals when it's suspended. So there is a spring inside of here. If you want to remove it and try to compress it slightly to pull this closer against the crank, uh, that's very possible to do too. Okay, so that's the deal with the rear main seal if you want to go ahead and change yours uh, because they do often leak. One thing I can assure you of, if you buy a junk one, it's going to leak. Make sure you buy an L-ring, E-L-R-I-N-G, like you see here. You can buy the rear main seal or a complete kit. So let's move along. Okay, so I'm sitting here filming and I hear water. I could not figure out where the water was. My daughter is washing her pride and joy. Yes, it is. <laughs> and let's see what sticker she has on her car. Just a two second break here. Well, she has Bigfoot on her. Yep. These stickers come out nice. I really, really like them. But that's her pride and joy. She likes her all-wheel drive in the winter. She washes this car, I think, every day. She has once to keep a once a week. <laughs> and she has to put wax on it. She always uses chemical guys. But I wanted to show my baby girl. Hi, guys. <laughs> okay. Now, what we have next is your oil drain plate. Okay. I would show you on that motor, but I don't want to turn that upside down right now and end up spilling oil everywhere. Uh, <laughs> oil leak. What we have here is the plate seals, okay? And I'm going to bring you in close again. I'm going to show you reasons why they end up leaking around there, okay? Now, what we have here, this is an aftermarket one, and obviously this needs cleaned up, but it's a factory German one. I tried to find, I had a little scale down the house that measures in grams and ounces, and I have no idea where it went. Uh, I really wanted to do that for a reason, though. This new one is, like, extremely light. Like, there's no weight to it at all. This one has some weight to it. It's much better quality, much superior. So here's what can happen a lot of times. Let's get this one out of the way. Flip that over and get a little straight edge. Let me bring you down a little bit closer. Now, from years and years of tightening these up, and you can see the lines on them from the washer, okay? These end up getting dimpled out, okay? Like curved out from getting pressed in. I'll show you what I mean. What you can do is put a straight edge over where the holes are. See that? I don't know if it'll make sense, but it should. Those need knocked down. So what you can do is take something, I'll just put this here just for purposes of showing you, put something under it flat, not your gasket cinch can, 
and tap that lightly with a flat mallet until it flattens back out again, okay? Because you need them holes flat where this is not going to seat against the engine block all the way around and you're going to have leaks everywhere. So I hope that makes sense. That's one thing about the plate. Another thing is acorn nuts, okay? And here's a close-up shot. See what it looks like? It's a closed nut. I know some of you know this already, but some of you don't, and that's okay. Nobody knows everything, not even me. All right, you want to use the acorn nuts. You do not want an open nut on these holes, and here's why. These are a closed unit, and you use a crush washer, okay? When that is seated against here with a crush washer, no oil can get through the studs and pass on to the ground. If you use a regular nut, it's going to happen. I guarantee it will. So that's that part of it. Now it comes into play. Of course, don't forget your strainer. In your, in your engine kits comes oil strainer gaskets. Now you can buy them separately, you know, of course. Uh, you want to make sure you use a little bit of I know I'll be bringing this stuff up a lot, but the Permatex sealer is almost liquidy, and I'll open it up in a minute and show you what I mean. It's the aviation sealer. Now, you want to put a little bit on each side of it, you know. Of course, you have one here, whoops, sorry, one there that goes up to the block, and then, of course, another there, and then your strainer plate. So you want the sealer on all of that. Now, one more thing I need to bring up, of course, is when you're tightening these, now you knew I had it upside down, I'm doing it for filming purposes. Tighten here, 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 okay? Don't start tightening around that way. Don't do that, no, no, no. Always use a staggered sequence like you did on uh, old Chevy five lug wheels. You're staggering when you're tightening the wheels, stagger when you tighten these. Use a 10 millimeter socket with a quarter inch ratchet. Okay, that's all you need. Don't go berserk or act like a nut job. Tighten these up, you'll break the studs or you'll crush it and it will leak. That's why these are like they are. That's not mine. But anyhow, you wanna go ahead and torque them. I think, look up the spec, I think it was eight pounds, but I can't remember now. To be honest with you, I do it by feel because I'm so used to it. So look up your own torque specs on it. All right. Okay, so now we are at the transmission and you're thinking we were talking about motor oil leaks. And we are. We're going back to the engine in a minute, but I wanted to remind you about something. Here is your swing axle. You have an IRS swing axle. They're all double jointed. But the point I'm making here is behind the throttle bearing right here, is an input shaft seal like you see right here. That starts leaking. All of a sudden, it's running down your bell housing and onto the ground. Your engine is hooked up to this. A lot of people will mistake it and think the rear main seal and their engine is leaking, and that's clearly not what's leaking. Or should I say the crankshaft seal before somebody has a heart attack? You want to make sure that seal is good in the transmission, okay? Also, if it's leaking, it can also complicate the clutch by getting into the material on the clutch plate and it starts chattering or skipping. So you want to make sure your input shaft seal is good. Always check the fluid on the ground. Smell it. 90, 80, 90 weight has a distinctive odor that almost makes you want to throw up. Sorry to say that. Uh, it's a distinctive odor compared to oil, transmission fluid, stuff like that you'll know when you smell it. So that's one part that can leak. Let me move over to the next. Now, being a swing axle, these are much different than the IRS, as which we refer to them to. 68 and up had IRS. The 68 only had them if they were an auto stick, semi-auto stick. 69 and up all had IRS, like you see here. Those have final drive sills on the side. I did a video on that, of course, uh, as you can see here. 
and they're very easy to change. Now, if you have a swing axle like this, they do like to leak. I will admit that. They're a pain in the butt. But I noticed, obviously, this whole transmission I'm going to redo completely. It'll look nice when it's done and sealed great. You have your boots here. When you go to replace these boots, do not put junk ones on or you're going to have oil on the ground. Okay? Buy good quality boots. Inside of here, which we'll be taking apart a little bit later, uh, there's shims in here, but they're also gaskets. I believe there's two different thicknesses, and it matters which ones you put in there. Those also can leak, all right? Now, I've heard some people say put sealer on them. I guess a little skim of aviation sealer wouldn't hurt, but don't go crazy because remember, they're shims in the thousandths marks. So in my mind, putting sealer on those would start to take up space. I know that sounds crazy, but that's just the way my brain works. So, okay, let's get back to the engine. I just wanted to go over those few things real quick. Next thing we're going to discuss is the push rod tubes and seals, both things, okay? I'll bring you up close a minute and show you something here. Now, as you can see, those are your push rod tubes. Bear with me. I know this is the only engine I have here right now. My other one's in California getting the block done. Uh, and as you know, they go to the engine block up to the head. And of course, they seat against each other. I have a couple different types of push rod tubes, okay? Some of them have that cardboard feel to them, so to speak. I know that sounds weird. I like the CB Performance ones that you see here. They're really nice. Now, you see the springy part on both ends, okay? When you're installing push rod tubes, the springy parts, take a hold of them. I don't have any here, I apologize. And just go like that. You want to stretch them out on each end a little. So when you're installing them, you put them into the head and into the motor. It compresses them back together and makes them nice and tight for a good seal. Now, here's a push rod tube seal, like you see here, okay? That goes on the end of the push rod tubes. And that will come in a master kit. You're cheaper off buying a master L-ring kit, okay? Now, I like to use the aviation sealer around these seals. A uh, little smear around them, nothing crazy. I forgot to open this. I'll open it in a minute. And that way it gives them a chance to seat and seal. Now, if you don't want to do that, that's perfectly fine. You can use the dielectric grease around them, okay? And what that does is let them move around a little bit until they seat. Because if you put them in dry, this is just my thought process. If you put them in dry, they can actually bind, okay, or tear a little bit. When you have a little bit of dielectric grease, it lets it move around a little and seat where it needs to. Uh, trust me, that's a good tip more than you think it is. Uh, they also have spring-loaded pushrod tubes. If, in fact, you want to use those, make sure you go to CB Performance, JC, SCAT, one of the top vendors. You want good quality because you want them to seal. The nice thing about the spring-loaded is if you do have to change one or something, you just pull your rock arm off, slide the push rod tube, I'm sorry, <laughs> the push rod out, and drop your tube down, put the spring-loaded in. Lots of guys like these, okay? I do. I haven't used them in a long time, and I may on the stroker motor that we're building. However, uh, make sure to get good quality if you go that direction. And even on your push rod tubes, try to use CB Performance stainless ones. They're actually really nice. Let me show you this because I keep bringing it up. Some of you may have already used this. I don't know. But it's more of a, uh, see, like a liquid but it's actually a really nice sealer. So I like using that. If you get into the heavier permatexes, they're, uh, the gasket makers, are, they're thick, okay? And you don't want thick and gooey like on your case halves, you know, your engine block or your oil pump, uh, push rod tube seal stuff like that, because you don't want it getting in to the engine. The oil journals, the oil pump, you will lock your motor up if it clogs, obviously. I do use this in one place, and I'll talk about that briefly here. Let's go on to the next thing. And another thing, I don't know if any of you are aware of this, but there is an O-ring inside of here. Let me try to bring you up really close. 
I don't know if you can see it, but there is an O-ring right here. Make sure you use a good quality O-ring inside your flywheel snout. I call it a snout. I don't know. Now we're moving along to the valve covers, and we're going to go over to the engine in a minute. But first things first, these are rubber. I can't find, I have uh, a pair around here somewhere of cork. I prefer the cork. You do what you want. If you want to use the rubber ones, go ahead. But I like the cork gaskets. I believe they seal much better. But let's go over to the motor a minute and we'll go over things. Now your valve cover is held on by, I call it a bell wire. Uh, it's actually like a clamp. Now these seat inside the valve cover and the dimples. Now, when you're new to these, make sure when you use your screwdriver that you hear that click and they're seated properly because if not, you're going to have an issue. Also, and I don't want to take this off because I don't want oil on my floor right now. We do that enough. Uh, you want to make sure you use, if you're using cork or rubber, you can use the Aviation Permatex sealer. I know I keep bringing it up on the side of the gasket that meets the valve cover. And then you can reuse it a couple times because it'll stick to the valve cover. Do not, whatever you do, put sealer on the side of the gasket that meets the cylinder head, okay? Because then you're gonna have a mess. A lot of times these will leak due to the fact that people before you was trying to scrape the gasket material off and instead of using a plastic scraper, they'll use a screwdriver which then puts notches in the material, in your aluminum, and then you have leaks. If that happens and you're looking and you notice some score marks in your head, don't start sanding that aluminum. Don't do that, please. You will go ahead then and use some sealer on both sides of the gasket to get that seal. So I hope that all made sense. And watch with these fancy aftermarket chrome valve covers and blah, blah, they're junk, okay? Unless you get a really good high quality set of SCAT or something, or CB Performance sells them, don't buy the cheap chrome. Chrome don't get you home, and that's true. And I like chrome, but a lot of that aftermarket crap, well, it's crap. <laughs> All right, let's go. Now remember, if your bell, your, your hook, wire, whatever you want to call it, has become bent or distorted, buy new ones. They need to clamp properly to hold the pressure against the cylinder head. Try to find good used German ones on a Samba classified or somewhere if you have to. I don't like some of the new stuff. I'm not saying there isn't quality out there because there's a lot of great quality, but try to find good German stuff if possible. The next thing that we have is our oil cooler, okay? And these don't leak as often, but they do, okay? And a lot of times when the oil cooler is leaking, it ends up coming down the front of the engine near the oil pressure switch, uh, seeps out from under the fan shroud, like you see here. You think it's coming from somewhere else. Actually, I'm going to bring you up close. Here's the nuts where they're located that hold the oil cooler on. Okay, and they're under here. So, which means, and we're going to go over the seals in a minute. I'm going to show you them and explain the situation on how to make them not leak when you install the new ones. Uh, your fan shroud covers this, so you have to remove the fan shroud to change your oil cooler seals. And it does happen because the seals are rubber and they get hard from the intense heat over a period of time. So, let's get a little bit up close and personal with the seals and the oil cooler. I got one on the workbench. Before we go to the bench, as you look down here, that is where the nuts are that hold it on. Whoops, see them down inside here. And that's what lifts the oil cooler off. But I got one on a bench, so let's take a look at here it. Here is the oil cooler off of the engine, okay? And I'm gonna bring you up close so you know what I'm talking about with the seals. We have three nuts here. Now, if you take this apart, don't forget to put your Hoover bit back on. It won't cool properly. Uh, you have three nuts, and this would separate this from this. Your oil cooler from the bracket, okay? Now, between the oil cooler and bracket, you're going to have seals. I'll show you them up close. And there they are, okay? See how they're dimpled? Because they seat inside, okay? Hope that makes sense. I'll show you, and it'll make sense in a minute. You have seals inside here. Okay, 
and you have two seals here where it bolts to the engine block where I showed you the two nuts were. Now, where I'm going with this is these seals get hard. These are hard as a rock, the ones on there. Uh, they seat in there very nicely since there's a ridge on them, and then they seat to the engine block. Make sure to use some dielectrical grease around this when you're seating it to the motor because it gives it a chance to seat properly when you're tightening it down, okay? I don't really use aviation sealer on these. I never had to. Usually once you put them on, you're done. Just buy the good quality seals. No, don't go on a stud there. Uh, but the dielectric grease does not corrode rubber. That's why I bring that up a lot. And you can go ahead and it'll seat around nice and snug. Uh, you don't want an oil cooler leak because that's when you have issues where you got to pull the fan shroud, take it apart. You can do it while it's in the car. It's just not as fun. Next, we're going to discuss the distributor. Okay, now mine, the nut is already off of it. Your distributor has an o-ring around it and by the way caution with the distributor out never turn that motor do not turn it don't no 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 you'll end up screwing up the teeth on your gear but we won't get into that just a warning uh i'm going to show you this up close you have an o-ring on there now you can see mine's bad see how it's just flat with the distributor shaft okay it should be egged out a little wee bit so it has to seal when it goes in. Keep the laughter to a minimum there, please. Uh, it will seal nicely with this ridged out a little bit when it seats down inside. So a lot of the aftermarket ones, sadly, are too thick and you can't get your distributor in. A lot of times the original German ones are much better. So. And then, of course, it just pushes right into place, but it shouldn't push that easy. That's where I'm going with this. It shouldn't be able to just pop right up. This should have some drag on it, so that's a bad seal. The next thing we have is the fuel pump, okay? Uh, beware of aftermarket fuel pumps, by the way, with the diaphragms. They're a little bit stiffer, which causes higher pressure. And I can't quit giving information that don't relate to this video, but you'll need to use a fuel regulator, uh, pressure regulator. That's another video. I don't know why I did that. Uh, I can't get enough information out, I think. Uh, when you remove, obviously, there's two 13 millimeter nuts that hold this down, okay? Remove your fuel pump, and let me bring you in close a minute. After your fuel pump is removed, if you see oil leaking here, you know there's an issue. Pull your rod out, okay? There should be a gasket here. Then you will pull this out of the way, okay? And we're gonna go over to the workbench in a second. When you are taking the old gasket off of this, don't use a screwdriver. Use a plastic scraper or a plastic pry tool and take that off. A lot of times guys have done that and you have sharp edges in your aluminum here, which means you're going to have oil leaks. So sadly, if somebody got to it before you and used something sharp to remove the gasket, you're probably going to have an oil leak. So you'll use aviation sealer around the gaskets. Let's go over that real fast. As you notice, this is what I took out of the engine. You're going to put this on the motor first, okay? Here, you want me to go over to the block? That was stupid. So the best thing to do if this is scarred up at all is put a little bit of aviation sealer around your gasket, obviously, then put your, I just did it backwards, then put your gasket on. Put a little bit around the top of the gasket, okay? Then you're going to put it in the wrong way. There you go. Put that on. Then you will be laying another gasket on here. You can use aviation sealer again if you would like to. Okay. And then a little sealer and put your fuel pump back on the way that it goes. And then this whole unit is sealed against each other and the engine block. So a lot of times these will leak. Don't forget to put your rod in. I'm just using an example right now. So a lot of times these will leak though, so make sure you seal that off if you have a problem there. That could be the issue why of the block being scraped up or somebody didn't torque it properly. Another problem we run into a lot of times is the crankshaft pulley. There's an oil leak behind it where it goes into the engine. You can get a sand seal. It just looks like a wheel bearing seal to me. <laughs> but you want to put a sand seal in if need be. A lot of times the Di inner side diameter of the engine block where this goes through 
I don't know if I can find a picture I will they get scarred up and then they're leaking so you can use a sand seal to seal this up okay and it's not that hard to do this is where your oil pressure switch goes here is one right here okay this here had a mechanical gauge on it at one point but your oil pressure switch goes inside of here a lot of times they will start leaking so make sure it's you know some people will think it's their oil cooler and it's running down because that's where it goes make sure it's not your oil pressure switch okay if it is simply replace it it's not a big deal but the big deal about it is do not whatever you do over tightness don't go crazy on these because you'll crack the block right there and it can happen trust me i've not done it yet yeah, i shouldn't bring it up because now it'll happen but when you put it in just make sure it's sealed up properly okay and don't over torque it now I do keep a lot of sealers on hand. I probably have 10 different kind, or maybe that's not a lot, I don't know. But the one that I do keep on hand and I only use in one spot is this. This is gasket maker, ultra copper, okay? And this stuff is for maximum temperature. Where I use that at is on the piston jugs, okay? AKA jugs. I use that and I'm going to show you, you don't use a lot. You don't want it going inside the engine block and going all over the place or once again, end of the earth, you know. Here's a short clip of where I used it so you can see from one of my previous videos. Down the studs, just like that, bam. All right, let me move you around so you can see. So that should make sense to you. Don't go carried away with it. You just want enough to seal them jugs to the heads. I don't use the paper gaskets. I think they're junk. That was like a late 30s concept for that, which is fine. But we're much better than that now. I think we are. Another place that you will have leakage possibly is your oil pump. Now, of course, my crank pulley is in the way, but we're okay because I did an oil pump installation video. Here's a small clip from it. What you want to do to put it on properly watch where you put aviation sealer because you don't want to clog any holes because then you're not going to have oil pressure but that is another spot that they can leak okay i believe that i did cover everything on oil leaks these motors and transmissions don't have to leak oil although this is my first swing axle i heard sometimes they're stubborn with the boots but regardless our motors don't have to leak oil as I showed you, uh, besides replacing gaskets and seals, sometimes if you look and think, I had a new gasket on or why is it leaking, they're aluminum. Now you can buy plastic scrapers, which have more of an edge on them, but they're still plastic. I highly advise that with these motors. Like I said, and I hate to be repetitive, I don't like to do that. However, if in fact you think, I just put new valve cover gaskets on, I put a new rear main seal in, I've put in, uh, you know, new fuel pump seals, you know, things of that nature. Why is it leaking? Because some butthead scraped it with a piece of metal to get the old gasket off. I know they say you do not need sealants, da 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 da. Yes, you do, okay? Sometimes you do, but use the proper sealant for the proper place, okay? That's about it. I hope this covered everything on why you don't have to have oil leaks on an air cooled motor. It can be prevented. No, they don't mark their spot. I don't think it's funny. I hope everybody enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. Uh, next week, we're going back on. I, we did the door last week. I'll probably do the latch mechanism. That'll be an in-between video I'll throw in because people wanted to know how to take them apart and lubricate them. So I'll pull the door back up, put it on the horses, and we'll do that. And then I get to get on the front beam. We're going to get the front beam all set up. We got much, much to do on the 68. So let's get back on it. I thought this would be a really good educational video for people. Winter's coming soon. People are putting their cars in the garage and are getting ready to start doing stuff to them. Here's your chance to make it right. 
Thanks for the donations. Down in the description, you can click and give a donation or buy stickers or t-shirts. I do appreciate it. As much as I appreciate all you being part of this community and keeping it alive. I will see you soon and Sunday nights for the club meeting chat on this channel.